Sparta Core Training, and I just wanted to take you on a tour today of one of my favorite places. Um, you hear me talk a lot about recovery, um, and this is the modality I like to use the most. Um, when it comes to my own training, um, especially after a really hard workout, this is where I like to come. So I wanted to come here, introduce you to the owner, Andrew, and give you a little walk through, and then we're gonna talk about floating a little bit, and hopefully answer all your questions. Hi guys, welcome to Balance Float. I'm Andrew, I'm the owner here. Um, I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the building, and then we're gonna have a little bit of a chat about floating, and uh, what to expect, and what it's all about. So come through. Let's start off with one of the uh, coolest places in our building. <laughs> After you finish your float, you get to hang out in this awesome, uh, you know, we call it the hair drying station, but really it's just to get back out into the real world and get ready to face it. Keep coming through. As you can see, we love our artwork here. All right, through this long hallway, we have five float rooms. Um, they're all pods. We prefer to float in pods for many reasons, but one, um, it really encapsulates the feeling, the true environment of being in a sensory deprived environment and feeling like you're in the womb, you know, take, bringing you back to the most natural feeling that is possible. So come on through and I'll show you what it looks like. So this is one of our float pods. Um, we use superior float tanks. In this 10 inches of water, there's a thousand pounds of Epsom salt. What, it's what makes you float without any effort at all. It will push you all the way up to the surface. Um, Epsom salt's a muscle relaxant. It's great for the body. Um, and then we shut down the five senses to the brain. And we'll talk a bit more about that uh, shortly. But as you can see also in the rooms, we've got showers here. Um, Every room has its own dedicated shower, and, um, and everything is provided. So shampoo, body wash, conditioner, towels, uh, we've got body lotions, we've got leaving conditions, conditioners, we have um, robes, everything that you possibly would need to come and float, we have it for you. All you really need to bring is yourself. So as you can see on all of our doors, we have butterflies and inside the room is the pod, which essentially represents the cocoon. It is the uh, metamorphosis of going in as something and coming out as something else. And we believe that over long-term floating, it can have profound effects uh, on our mind and on our body. And so we believe it can have great changes in our life. All right, so you guys just had a little walkthrough. So you got to get some visuals of what the floating experience is actually like. Um, but I think you probably have a lot of questions about what can it do for you um, and how you might use this modality for um, your recovery if you're interested in the fitness side of things or even just for um, a little bit of, you know, defrag from your, your tough work week. Um, so with that said, um, if you wanna go into just the basics of floating um, and how it can help people. Okay, so as I was saying earlier in the float room, you're in 10 inches of water, there's a thousand pounds of Epsom salt, it's what keeps you afloat uh, without any effort at all. So, you know, people ask, well, what happens if I fall asleep? Uh -huh. uh, you can't sink, you cannot drown, there's so much salt, it will keep you all the way up at the surface without any effort at all. Right. Epsom salt's a muscle relaxant, uh, it helps the body to physically relax, uh, it's known for detoxifying the body. Um, Epsom salt is high in magnesium, so it's really good for the body in that sense. Um, and then you're also in a zero gravity environment. With that much salt, it's kind of like floating in space. Right. Um, and so what happens is as the muscles start to relax in the body and the body starts to physically relax, the body gets to naturally open up in a way that's not naturally possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
and so without anyone touching you or pushing or cracking or you know massaging or anything like that it is a very natural form of decompression great for the spine for your neck for your shoulders all those sorts of things and especially you know after a workout i mean you know when i train with you guys and you know i come straight from my training session i jump in the tank for an hour and what i find is that i'm nowhere near as sore the next day um, right. and we know that epsom salt helps break down lactic acids in the muscles and it just creates a faster recovery so that i can train more and i don't feel as sore or as tight as i usually would so i've used it in my own training and i can definitely attest to that um that even if I've had a really hard workout, um, I've had a much better recovery process if I go ahead and come in and um, do a float. Um, much less sore and I, I feel a lot looser. I don't feel near as tight afterwards. Yeah, definitely the tightness is a big one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I mean, and then, the, then we go into the other parts of floating, which is more revolved around the mind and the effects on the brain. Um, and essentially, when you shut down the five senses to the brain, you will get more of a rest than you would from sleep. Mm -hmm. So essentially, the idea is, is that the brain gets it to, to rest in a way that is not naturally possible by having no light, no sound, no touch because water is at skin surface temperature, no taste because you're not eating, and there's no smell. It's just salt mm -hmm. and water. So essentially... Um, when you shut down those five senses, all you're left with is your thoughts. The quicker you can calm the mind and quieten the thoughts, the better you're gonna feel when you come out. Um, some people have quoted an hour rest in a tank is like four to eight hours worth of sleep. Um, I've had times where I've had very late nights uh -huh. and the next day just got in the tank for an hour and come out feeling like I've had a full night's sleep. Um, it definitely helps in that sense, so for people that do struggle with having really peaceful sleeps mm -hmm. or having, um, or, you know, not going to bed at ease or calm or relaxed um, or going to bed and then waking up at three in the morning or four in the morning just because of stress and anxiety mm -hmm. um, and all those sorts of things, floating is a great way and it's a great tool to use to help calm our minds down so that we can rest peacefully. I mean, as you know, like to sleep really well, to rest very well, when you wake up, you feel amazing in the morning when you've had a great sleep. Right. And so it's really programming our mind to calm down. Um, and you know, one of the things that, that they've, they've scientifically proven with floating is that it lowers cortisol in the body. So right. cortisol is a stress hormone. The more that we lower cortisol in our body, the, the, the less stressed we are, uh, the more relaxed we are, the better we feel, uh, the less pressure it puts on the body, the body's able to recover and to heal itself uh, much better when it's less stressed. Um, and so, especially guys in the fitness industry that are constantly have this physical stress on the body, they're constantly working out, sometimes two and three times a day, uh, you know, like you guys that are always training. I don't, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, it's, it's a good way to actually physically de-stress so that when you do go home, you're much more relaxed. You know, you, you're not at 10 like you are at the gym. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know, you're coming down to four or to five, you know. And so, right. yeah, I definitely think it, it adds to better quality of life. Right. Uh, do you think, do you get quite a bit of, um, you know, amateur and pro athletes in here? We do. So I've had, um, I get professional footballers. I've got, you know, I've had a guy from the NFL that comes in regularly. Uh, we get some of the uh, Stanford footballers. We get, um, I get a lot of CrossFit guys, a lot of personal instructors or fitness instructors. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, I mean, it's a big part of our business. It's mm -hmm. a huge part of our business. And, and they all see the benefits and they all see it working for them. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it definitely, it is a big part of the industry. Yeah, and I think that speaks volumes when you have people at the peak of the industry, um, pro athletes, really using the modality um, for their own recovery. Um, and that's normally where I look to when I wanna try to get maximum benefit is I go and see what those guys are doing and then I try to incorporate that into my, uh, my own training regimen. I mean, just to add on to that, if we look at the NFL, 
six teams in the NFL, in the NFL now have them in their training facilities. Wow. Five NBA teams now have them in their training facilities. Um, and then, you know, and there's so many other sports that are now using it. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we, we're really just seeing the very beginnings of, of how this is going to evolve and, and develop over time. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, as you've been talking about with these professional athletes, the rest and recovery is just as important as the training. Right. You know, and it's open, they, they, everyone has come to realise that the balanced approach is the right one. Right. And so... Yeah, so this is definitely this is this is a part of the becoming right. a part of the regimen. Yeah, and and that being said, you know, your best workout is only gonna be as good as the recovery that you can do. So, um, just because you have an amazingly tough workout um, doesn't mean you're going to benefit from it. Um, you can only if you can recover from it then yeah it works it works great because that's where all of the building happens is during the recovery process outside of the gym um, and that's why I think this is such a beneficial thing is is we're really starting to see people um, have a focus on what happens after the training versus uh, you know just going and having a killer leg session uh, we know that nutrition is important hugely important um, sleep is hugely important and now we're branching out into all these little other spaces where we're trying to maximize maximize um, that recovery process yeah and I mean look the other thing that I think we should talk about is is when people first start working out mm -hmm. right and and being able to build that motivation to get up in the morning to go to the gym to go to the per, you know to the personal trainer to, to get motivated and sometimes when we're not feeling good and we're not well rested, it's hard to get that motivation just right. to take those initial steps into to creating better health. Uh -huh. And so I definitely think with floating, it can help right at the beginning stages. So not even the professional athletes, just let's talk about the everyday person, you know, we're about to go into holiday season, lots of food, lots of drinking, lots of, you know, festive activities. And, you know, it's hard to wake up in the morning and get yourself to the gym and to do what you need to do for uh -huh. you to feel good. So just creating, getting into the float tank will help you calm down, help you be more relaxed, help you be more focused and give you essentially the mental energy to be able to make those decisions that right. you need to make for yourself to get yourself on the right track from the very beginning. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's, the floating is great for the athlete, it's great for the weekend warrior. Um, and, and I think, I think, uh, most people will get that, that, you know, the better their recovery is, um, through something like this, um, the better they're going to feel and the better benefit they're going to have from their workouts. But, um, you know, we're here in the Silicon Valley, uh, we've got tons of working professionals around us. Um, what can somebody like that expect from floating? Um, I think with a lot of the professionals, uh, what we're seeing is is they're working long hours that they're in highly stressful environments all the time there's a lot of pressure to meet targets to get results to meet deadlines and so essentially they need to be at the top of their game to making sure that that they that they're hitting those targets that they're meeting those deadlines that they're doing all those things it's exactly the same as working out going to work is a is a stress it's it's a stress on the mind it also creates a stress on the body and then you need to recover from that stress it's just like going to the gym and doing a physical workout it's a stress on the body you need to recover from that stress they're two they're two of the same uh -huh. um, and and by them coming in here being able to just to relax to de-stress to, to let go of everything not to look at a phone not to look at a you know all these distractions that we have in our life and just to be able to calm right down right um, you know, it will definitely benefit them in their life and becoming more productive at work. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I think, uh, you know, it lends itself to, to, you know, lots of different people for a lot of different reasons. We get a lot of people that come in here that are really into meditation, into yoga, uh, into mindfulness. Mm -hmm. um, and then we get, you know, one of the, the things that we get with talking about techies is um, they'll come in here because they're stuck on a situation at work right. and they need to come up and try to find a, an answer, a result 
or work come up with a work through to uh, resolve some sort of situation and you know there's a lot of aha moments uh -huh. in the pod and I see them coming out of here with smiles on their faces right. and it's like I've worked it out and sometimes you need to shut down everything to find that answer within yeah yeah and I you know I, I've used it I've had those moments as well um, you know building the gym this year um, there's been a lot of times where um, I'm deeply engrossed in a problem I'm just trying to figure out a way through it and probably some of my most aha moments have been in one of the tanks for sure yeah um, so you know probably one of the biggest things that's normally on people's minds when I try to tell them about floating and and what the benefits are is everybody wants to know how clean the water is it's our biggest asked question. <laughs> uh, so people ask, you know, do you throw the water out after somebody uses it? How do you clean it? What happens to it? Um, so we'll just start off by saying what's in the water first. So essentially there's a thousand pounds of salt in 160 gallons of water. Mm -hmm. Our filtration system will suck that water out uh, and clean it and put it back into the pod. Okay. Um, out of that 160 gallons, um, in 15 minutes, our pumps will clean 500 gallons of water. So essentially it's cleaning the water three times over. Uh -huh. And it goes through a number of stages in the filtration process. So it uses UV filtration, then it adds ozone into the water, uh, which is another sterilizing uh, component. Then it goes through uh, one micron bag skimmers, which removes any debris or anything like that in the water. Uh -huh. And then the last thing that we actually add into the water, because this is another question that we get asked quite often, is it chlorine, is it bromine, what do you use to sterilize the water? We use a, a product, uh, we use hydrogen peroxide. Okay. It's not the form that you would go to the salon and they put in your hair. Uh -huh. It's a food grade of hydrogen peroxide that in small doses is actually safe for consumption. Okay. okay. Um, and hydrogen peroxide, if you look at the third, if you do any research on the 35% food grade of hydrogen peroxide, you'll find a lot of information on why it's good to bathe in it, how it helps the body detoxify. Um, and essentially, it's one of the most healthiest sterilizing agents to put our body in. Okay. Um, so, um, so our water is, you know, I always say to people, we're 10 times cleaner than any hot tub industry, than any swimming pool industry because they only clean a percentage of the water per day. Right. We clean our water three times over in between every single user. Right, okay. So there you have it. You don't get to use the excuse anymore <laughs> that you're scared that the water is too dirty. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, just, you know, you'll know when you come into any float center, you, you'll look at the water, you'll smell the water. If there's something wrong with the water, you quite, you, you'll know very quickly uh -huh. uh, and it becomes very prevalent. But you know, um, you know, I can assure most people that if you go to any float center that has relatively new equipment, most of them are now using ozone and UV. Uh -huh. um, most of them are using hydrogen peroxide. It also depends on um, under what county it falls in because some counties force float centers to use chlorine, unfortunately. Uh, fortunately for us, uh, our county in San Mateo has been great. They allow us to use hydrogen peroxide um, which has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so I think probably the last thing I want to go over really is um, how do, how would the average person um, add this into either their just their well their wellness program in general? What what does it normally look like for the average user? The average user would come in probably I would say once every two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, and depending on, on what the user is, if they're into uh, physical activity, they're into cycling, they're into going to the gym or any of those sorts of activities, a lot of the time they'll come after a workout session uh -huh. straight away, uh, essentially to, to minimize, like I said, the lactic acids in the muscles and to help the body recover quickly and right. minimize soreness. But then we look at the other groups of people, people that are in highly stressful environments or you know, people that are, um, that are trying to mentally uh, de-stress and calm down, that have anxiety issues, that have sleep issues. Uh, a lot of the times those people will come in at night because mm -hmm. it'll essentially calm them down so that when they go home and they go to bed, they have a much deeper sleep and a much mm -hmm. more relaxed sleep. Okay, awesome. 
Well, I think that answers just about all the questions that anybody might have about floating. Um, so I want to thank you for the interview, Andrew. And if you are in the area, where are you, Andrew? So we're in Redwood City. Um, come and say hello. Uh, you can book if you want to come and try us out. You can book online, balancefloat.com. Our floats are $50 for an hour. So it's quite affordable when you compare it to things like a massage or other types of relaxation activities. Um, and, you know, most people that come through the door after their you know, first float, you know, people, a lot of people say, well, that was really interesting. Uh -huh. Usually by the second and the third float, they come out saying it was amazing. Awesome. And floating is a practice. It just takes a little bit of time to adjust to the environment and to be able to relax in the environment. But once you do, the benefits are amazing. And so come and say hello, come and check it out. And uh, we'd love to see you. All right, so there you have it, guys. Come down, check out Balance Float. Incorporate floating into your recovery process, whether you are a professional athlete, a weekend warrior, or you are a hardworking professional, you can definitely get benefit from the recovery modality. Like and subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time.